Hey everyone, welcome back to the Doctor Who Review. Today, Rachel and I are continuing our coverage of the first season with the sixth episode, Dalek. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's talk about number six. We have, this is Dalek. So this is only the second episode I've ever seen with a Dalek in it. But the result, the one from season 10 was very brief. It was only enough for like a minute. Yeah. Well, as you can tell from what, having watched season 10, even though this is supposedly the last Dalek in existence, it's not really. All right. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> So, this, at this point, you're supposed to believe that this is the last Dalek in existence. Yeah. So this one was, this is my favorite of the four, I have to say, for sure, by a lot, actually. And so this one, they are in Salt Lake, woo -woo! and uh, <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> which I don't know why they picked Salt Lake. I don't quite understand it. I don't know, anyway. they were underground for the whole I, thing. I know. <laughs> it, it really could have been anywhere. I think they yeah. probably just like, threw a dart at the map. And we're yeah. like, oh, well, it landed on Salt Lake City. We'll, <laughs> we'll set it there. I, I, the only thing I can figure is that there is a, um, the LDS church has a, uh, like, kind of a bunker where they store all of, like, it's actually in a mountain that they store, like, hmm artifacts and stuff like that like there's some oh, of the original because like, it controls temperature and whatever and uh and so that's the only thing that i can figure out is that maybe they were they're kind of going off of that but uh, there's no alien artifacts that i'm aware of but who knows <laughs> who knows and so anyway but this it was kind of fun but um but i enjoyed this one a lot and uh, basically like the idea is that the tardis takes them to salt lake under this underground bunker there's this man henry van staten who is this like rich collector guy and he has all of these artifacts from all these different aliens kind of like his own little like roswell collection basically and uh he has a dalek and he uh, and the doctor is like horrified about this. It's supposed to be the one that survived all the like the war or whatever. That's this last survivor. Rose feels sorry for the Dalek, and she puts her hand on it, and it brings him him or her. I don't know. Daleks have a sex, but anyway, it brings it to life and kind of back to life. <laughs> and he actually like absorbs Rose's DNA, and then the Dalek sets out to basically kill everyone and it like why did the daleks want to kill everybody what what is they why it's just their programming or they have some reason basically they're supposed to be an analogy for nazis like they were written not long after the defeat of the nazis like it was like 20 years i would never have thought nazi later. with dalek huh interesting they're, they're they're basically space nazis hmm. they don't like anyone who is not like them they only want Daleks to be the only race in existence. Yeah. But there's nothing specific to humans then that they no. are against. They, it wouldn't matter what planet this was on, the Daleks would behave exactly the same. They want to kill everyone who is not a Dalek. Well, Do they see. always cat absorb DNA of, the, of people no, like this? No. This, I'm not... That part always confused me a little bit. I think it was just sort of a handy little writing tool to get them out of this situation yeah. they themselves i think basically they just said because rose is has traveled through time there was something about her dna that would help the dalek regenerate okay that's interesting that's interesting i guess like i've learned as far as again my somewhat limited experience but i feel like with doctor who i really like the ones that feel very horror influenced uh, like the one with the tree from from season 10 and that one had a very horror feel that was very fun and i really like the old ones where they go back in time. Those are my favorite by far. And so this one to me had those horror elements that were fun to me. They're getting chased. They're getting, there's tension. Uh, they're in a, you know, a lot of times really small cramped environments uh, that, you know, you've got this evil hunting them down kind of a thing. And so I thought it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Doctor Who does small cramped environments well. Mm -hmm. They do... <laughs> That used to be like a, a main staple on the show back in the day because they set a lot of episodes in underground bunkers or caves, places where they didn't have to do a whole lot of detail and they could reuse sets. But it really does add to the atmosphere of the show. Mm. Yeah, it creates believable tension. Like, what is the doctor going to do? How is he going to get out of this? And there's also this kid named Adam 
who is he works for Van Staten. He, he's Staten? employed by Van Staten because he's he apparently was a child prodigy, and Van Staten wants to use him to mm -hmm. figure out what all this alien tech is that he's collecting. Is he just in the next two episodes, or or just the yeah. just these two episodes, or is he in others? Nope, those are the only two episodes. He was mm -hmm. he was meant to show the Doctor might actually take people with him that aren't the greatest and he was the first companion because they call him a companion like in official places he's the first companion ever to be kicked out of the TARDIS for bad behavior mm. but we'll get to that in the next episode <laughs> <laughs> so but in this one uh he's just kind of along for the ride really yeah and technically he is in the next one too he just makes a a series of very stupid decisions yes he does yes he does i liked the idea of sort of rose's humanity impacting the dalek and you get mm -hmm. the moment where they actually open it up and you see the creature inside and yeah this is the first episode where they toy with daleks acquiring human emotions in some way but i think i think this is probably the the best one mm -hmm. that they do that in because it happens again in another season in a different way, completely different way, but I'm not the biggest fan of that episode. Mm -hmm. So this one is probably my favorite of the way that they have, they toy with yeah. the Daleks acquiring some form of morality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Dalek really does take out a lot here. Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of very like, um, sort of Star Trek-y in the sense that like the red shirts just like it's, it's nobody that you really care about it's nobody that you really but like there's quite a bit of <laughs> quite a bit mm -hmm. of carnage <laughs> um, thankfully it's all like bloodless goreless it's yeah. just they're zapped and then they fall over right which right. I if we're gonna have like insane amounts of violence I would prefer it to be that I don't like I don't like blood and gore Agreed. I prefer Doctor Who does does that well having like bloodless death agreed yeah yeah I, I agree so anyway yeah this this is one that i really enjoyed i would give this one i don't know like an 8.5 i really liked it <laughs> i thought it was good i i i should probably explain this but i'm actually not the hugest fan of this episode i would give it a seven because i do like a lot about it but there's a whole bunch of people in this episode that I think are terrible actors. Mm. <laughs> and and maybe they're not actually terrible actors, but I'm I need I haven't looked everybody up, but I'm 99% sure that almost everybody in this episode is British putting on a, an American accent. Yeah, that's and very true. Agreed. They're doing a very good job. <laughs> Especially the guy the one guy Thank you, Doctor, but I think I know how to fight one single tin robot. His delivery on that line just makes me cringe and groan yeah. the entire time. That's true. <laughs> That's true. He was pretty bad. If That's Penelope true. Wilson brought the last one up, that single <laughs> line brings this episode down. I just hate it so much. Yeah, yeah, That's true. Where people, where people seem to be mispronouncing things or saying things with just... They don't sound American, and that really yeah. bothers me. Okay. Like, there, there are English actors who can do American accents very well, but I don't think any of them were in this episode. <laughs> maybe it's just I liked this one way better than the other three, and so maybe that's why it felt elevated. But you're right. It, it, that, that is an issue for sure. Yeah, the acting is, isn't great. I'll go to eight. I'll give it eight out of ten, because I was really entertained by it. I thought it was fun. And uh, so, <laughs> that gives you a hint what I thought of the long game. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our video. As Rachel teased, the next time we are going to be talking about the seventh episode, The Long Game. So we'll see you then. Bye!